selling me short. It's like about 50,000 copies, Willis. So. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for coming. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's real good to see so many people showed up with this horrible weather we've been having. It's a very serious moment for me up here because uh, kind of an unusual, uh, what's the word, confluence of events and presences here today. Now, I have in my hand something that's been hanging on my living room wall for several years. And it's, it's, a, it's a memorial card. It says, in loving memory of Leonard J. Snyder, Jr. He was born on July 30th, 1967, and he died on September 11th, 2001. He was in the World Trade Center. He's one of the victims of, of that terrible tragedy that happened on September 11th. And it just so happens that I got this memorial card from Leonard's uncle, who is a reader of American Free Press, and he happens to be here today. Uh, I don't want to embarrass him by putting him on the spot, but uh, needless to say, he is here today. Snyder Jr. And I said that as long as I'm alive, I'm going to try to do what I can to find out what really happened on September 11th and who was responsible and to punish them. I also dedicated the book to Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney of Georgia. <laughs> Some of the very same people I think who were responsible for the destruction of the World Trade Center and certainly for setting the stage for what happened on September 11th, they were among the people who did their damnedest to try to destroy Cynthia McKinney, and they knocked her out of Congress, but you know, she's come back now. She's, she's not in Congress anymore, but she's, she's out there fighting. And the third person to whom the book, The Judas Goats, was dedicated was a guy who was with us here today, Jim Traffic, because I think <laughs> example of someone who has truly paid a price uh, unlike most people will ever experience, and they can thank God for that. Uh, you know, of course, I've written this book, Target Traffic, and that's only the tip of the iceberg of the trafficking story and what they did to Jim Traffic. I, think, I, uh, I gave copies of the book to lawyer friends of mine. I, I, I'm admitting to having friends who are lawyers. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to tell you, this one friend of mine called me up after he read the book, and he said, my God. He said, they did that to him? And I said, yes, they did that to him. Welcome to America. Yeah. Well, the reason, again, I, I want to come bring this full circle. This, this incident, September 11th. Now, after September 11th, we were, we were told they did it to us because they don't like McDonald's and they don't like American women in miniskirts and things like this. We were not allowed, we were not allowed to discuss that, that funny little possibility that they did it to us because they didn't like our foreign policy. On September 12th, I saw somebody kicked off one of the local radio stations by one of the hosts who said he was terribly offended, terribly shocked that someone would dare to suggest that our U.S. foreign policy had anything to do with causing September 11th to happen. That was just totally politically incorrect to say. Well, I'll tell you what, on September 13th, maybe it was 12th or 13th, I was sitting in my favorite restaurant here on Capitol Hill, a wonderful Greek place called Verna. There's somebody else who used to eat there all the time, too, and unfortunately it's closed now, and that's Jim Trafficking. And I ran into Jim, and he said to me, he said, did you hear what I had to say? And I said, no, I didn't. And then he proceeded to tell me that he got up on the floor of the house right after September 11th and said, hey, maybe, maybe these, these attacks have something to do with our U.S. foreign policy. And I remember Jim telling me this. He said, he said that all the other members of Congress, while he was talking, they were just standing there with their jaws down to the floor because Jim, well, they knew Jim was telling the truth. But they didn't have the guts to say it. And that, that is my point here, ladies and gentlemen. There used to be a lot of big people 
in the U.S. Congress, maybe back up until about the 1950s. But as far as I'm concerned, during the last half of the 20th century, there was only ever one big man, one real man in Congress, and that was Jim Trafficking, because he had the guts to say why he went to prison, that should tell you everything right there. And I'll tell you one more thing here, you know, when I, when I read the newspaper accounts of Jim's indictment, and I started reading some of the stories, I said this in the book too, I said there was one particular charge against Jim that I said to myself, oh my God, thank God, maybe he did do something. But you know what, in my estimation, in my opinion, I have a little bit of a legal background. I certainly have a background in journalism. I study a lot of these things. That one particular charge against Jim Traffic, in my estimation, may well be the most outrageous of them all, the most fabricated of the charges, the one that was actually very carefully crafted totally out of the blue. So I'm here to tell you, this guy has paid a mighty price for daring to speak out, and we are very proud to have him here. And I'm very proud to introduce the man who is going to bring Jim up here today. It's my friend and colleague, Pete Papa Heracles. Pete, we call him Pete the Greek because he is a Greek, but he's a very proud American. Pete's a Greek immigrant. Uh, he started out as a reader of American Free Press. And uh, he walked in the door one day to see what we were all about, and you know, this is how we do it. All of a sudden, he was on the payroll, the <laughs> circulation. <laughs> but we've been very, very lucky to have Pete, and uh, he has uh, steered this conference to fruition. Uh, uh, Pete's, a, Pete's a good man, he's a dedicated guy, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Pete. Thank you, Mike. 